Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So in this one, we are going to start with 8.11 because in the last session I discussed 8.10 and in between actually two questions 6 and 7 are still remaining. I am well aware of that. So now as far as this particular question is concerned, that is what I told you 8.11 is the question which we are going to actually begin this session up with. The Washington, and it's a very strong and tough question, the Washington branch of F9 Mumbai Limited. Now, branch is in Washington. Correct head office is in Delhi. One thing is clear. So, this time your reporting currency is rupee without any iota of doubt and foreign currency will have to be converted into the reporting currency. Reporting currency rupee, I have already told you now. Now, head office account. This is the uh, trial balance of the branch and branch is claiming that we are supposed to give $22,800 to the head office. Second important point is sales in terms of dollars, then daters and creditors and then machinery we have got, cash at bank, stock and then goods from head office and of course goods from head office is equal to $5,000. No, sorry, $64,000 and then expenses are $5,000. This is the total. The first thing in this question is that this is first time you are facing this sort of information. This time question states that in the books of the head office, the branch account is standing in this banner. In the books of head office, Washington branch is standing in this banner. Because head office is in India, quite obviously the head office is preparing its accounts in rupee terms. So head office has prepared the branch account and in the branch account as you can see there is opening balance of 8 lakh 10 thousand that means in the beginning of the current year head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive 8 lakh 10 thousand that been due from branch is still 8 lakh 10 thousand and we have sent goods and we have sent goods to the branch in the current year in the current year worth 29 lakh 26 thousand so quite obviously it means now we have to receive 37 lakh 36 thousand from the branch and branch has paid 28 lakh 76 thousand it means at the end of the year head office is claiming at the end of the year this is more this is rather more important than the other information that we are supposed to receive 8 lakh 60 thousand now with the help of this particular information you can derive out many things for example in this particular case you have been given goods from head office 5000 and now you have come to know that goods sent to branch in the current year is equal to 29 lakh 26 thousand indirectly it means the corresponding value of five thousand dollar in indian currency is equal to 29 lakh 26 thousand when i will convert the trial balance i will write goods sent from head office five thousand on actual basis its corresponding value will be equal to 29 lakh 26 thousand this is one thing which you need to be well aware of correct second important point here is now second important point is with respect to closing balance here it is given as you can see that branch is claiming we are supposed to pay to the head office dollar 22 lakh 800 sorry 22,800 now at the end of the year head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive only 8 lakh 60,000 that being the corresponding value of this is 8 lakh 60,000 is it clear to you or not so with the help of this table you can drive out at least two important facets it's a tough question i have already told you now question states that goods are sent to branch at cost plus 10 percent and the branch and the branch sells the goods at invoice price plus 25 percent so this information again is very vital no doubt about that and further it is given machinery was acquired on 31st of January 2017 actually you make it on 31st of January 2017 when dollar one was equal to 40 obviously you are going to use this rate for the conversion of the machinery because it's a case of integral foreign branch in case of integral foreign branch the date on which actually transaction took place with respect to acquisition of the fixed asset we use that rate to convert the what we call fixed asset further also in this question it is given machinery is de machinery is depreciated 
in the question it is given that machinery is depreciated by 10% and the branch branch manager is entitled to a commission of 5% of the profit so this line is also very very vital just wait So machinery is to be depreciated by 10% and branch manager is entitled to a commission of 5% profit of the branch. Machinery is depreciated by 10% and branch manager is entitled to a commission of 5% of the profits of the branch. Branch manager is entitled. That means we need to find out what is the branch manager's commission also. Correct? So that is why in this question, even though branch has furnished the information in terms of dollars the question is asking you to prepare the branch trading and profit and loss account in dollars so that means my first step will be to convert before converting the branch trial balance which we normally do in this question we will not directly convert the branch trial balance rather first of all we are going to prepare the branch trading and profit and loss account because question has asked us in terms of dollars so without converting we will have to first of all compute uh, prepare the branch trading and profit and loss account and there is a reason behind that because in this question it is written that branch manager is entitled to 10 percent commission uh, sorry machinery is depreciated by 10 percent and branch manager is entitled to a five percent commission we won't be able to have the figure of what we call branch manager's commission unless and until we shall have the what we call profit or loss account of the branch. So that is the basic problem and that is the reason why in this question, first of all, we will have to prepare the branch trading and profit or loss account. And question further states that convert the trial balance of the branch into Indian currency and prepare branch trading and profit or loss account and balance sheet in the books of the head office. So after the convergence, conversion will be your second step. Then once you you once you will have converted the branch trial balance into the Indian currency, then obviously after that you are supposed to prepare branch trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet in the books of head office means in the reporting currency. So this is interesting question as I told you. So in this question, two, three informations are very vital. So first of all, we need to understand the meaning of this particular goods are sent to branch at cost plus 10% and branch sells the goods at invoice price plus 25%. So, how to solve this question? I will completely solve the question before you. Just pay attention over here. 8.11 is the question which we are picking up now. Correct? Question number 8.11. I will try to use only this much of a space to solve the question. Correct? So, in order to solve the question, first of all, let me write here rates analysis. And you, I would love you to actually note down all these points. Rates analysis. First, I am going to do the rates analysis. And in order to do the rates analysis, what I am supposed to do now, first of all, suppose cost is equal to 100. And it is given in the question that goods are sent to the branch at cost plus 10%. So if cost is 100, I will add 10% to it. I am going to get what? I am going to get 110 and 110 it means happens to be the invoice price. This is your invoice price. Correct? And now the question states that branch sells the goods at 25% of this price. So I will take 25% of 110. 25% of 110 will be equal to 27.50. It means the selling price is 137.50. Normally, invoice price and selling price normally are same but can be different. So, question is very clearly specifying that selling price is this. When we do rates analysis, So after having computed invoice price and selling price, what I will do, I will write here in one column cost. In another column, I will write invoice price. And in the next column, I will write selling price. We have done such things many a times before. 100 is your cost. 
110 is your invoice price and 137.50 is your selling price. Isn't it or not? Now, first of all, I will take the difference between the cost price and the invoice price. The difference between the cost price and the invoice price, as you can see, happens to be 10. 10 is the margin or the difference between the cost and invoice price. 10 by 110 or 1 by 10. Because in the denominator we have written invoice price, that means if I will apply this rate on an item which is at invoice price, that item will fall back to cost price. Isn't it or not? Similarly, now if I am going to take the difference between the invoice price and the selling price, what difference do you get actually in this case? The difference happens to be 27.50. 27.50. Isn't it or not? The <laughs> difference is 27.50. And if I divide it by selling price 137.50, Obviously, this is rate of margin on selling price and this rate can be used only on an item which is at selling price and if you are going to apply this rate on an item which is at selling price, that will fall back to invoice price. Is it clear to you or not? So, once you have thoroughly analyzed the rates, the next point is that now we have to prepare the branch office trading and profit and loss account, correct? as the question has asked us. So, in order to prepare the branch of his trading and profit and loss account, what I will do, first of all, let me stretch a line and I will stretch a line. I think this much is sufficient. And then, Okay, first let me prepare the branch trading and profit and loss account. So, this is the first demand of the question. Branch office trading and profit and loss account. Branch office trading and profit and loss account. In US dollars, correct? We are preparing this account in dollars. Remember one thing. So, in order to prepare this account, what I do... First of all, I look into the trial balance, which is given to you. If you will look into your trial balance, you will find that your item which can come in the balance sheet are sales. And one is sales, another one is stock, another one is goods sent from branch and obviously then expenses. So only these items can come in the trading and profit or loss account. Correct? So I write here, first of all, sales. Because we are preparing these accounts in dollars, I need not require to convert directly. I am writing $84,000. Correct? And then I will write opening stock. What is the amount of opening stock in this case? Amount of opening stock in this case happens to be 11200 So I will write here 11200 11200 Then goods sent to branch. So, goods sent to branch or received, you can also write 64,000. You have sent the goods, branch must have received those. Now, problem in this question is that we have been given expenses. I will compute the amount of gross profit, but before that, let me write here expenses. Expenses are 5,000. However, you have to take care of one important thing is that Below it is given to you that depreciation on machinery is 10%. So, depreciation on machinery. Now, first you look at what is the amount of machinery which is written in the trial. If I will look into that particular item, the machinery in the trial is 24,000 as you can see. So, I will compute 10% depreciation on it. So, 24,000 into 10%. Remember, we are preparing branch trading and profit and loss account in dollars only. So, 2400 will be your depreciation on machinery in terms of dollar. Now, in this question, the basic problem which we are facing is that neither we are having the closing stock. We are not having the closing stock. If we are not having the closing stock, quite obviously, we cannot find out our gross profit. 
because neither there is closing stock nor there is what we call gross, gross profit. However, we can find out the amount of gross profit. Correct? How can you find out the gross profit? You just think you are branch. You have received the goods at the rate of 110, that is at invoice price. Remember one thing, you are branch office. You have received the goods at the rate of 110 and you are selling these goods at the rate of 137.50. Actually, this is invoice price. Problem is that branch is unaware of the real price. So they are receiving the goods at the rate of 110. That's all branch is all concerned about. Correct? And branch is concerned about that we are selling 110 rupee worth of goods at 137.50. Now, if selling price is 137.50 and invoice price is this much, it means whatever sales we are doing, we are getting a profit of 27.50. 27.50. That means if selling price is this much, profit is equal to this much. And if selling price happens to be your 84,000, if selling price is equal to 84,000, I have written 84. Yes. If selling price is 84,000, then what is my gross profit? So I can find out this way 84,000 into 27.50 divided by 137.50, and that will be equal to my gross profit. Is it clear to you or not? That is how you are going to derive the gross profit in this particular question. So you can straight away write here 84,000 is your selling price. And what is the gross profit included in it? It must be equal to 27.50 divided by 137.50 as I just told you in a moment ago. Correct? This will be equal to 16,800. So now you have the gross profit. Now your closing stock will become your balancing figure. And closing stock will be equal to 8,000. Is it clear to you or not? So once you have determined the, determined the gross profit, once you have determined the gross profit, next step is bring down your gross profit. Mike today is creating a bit of problem. So once you have determined the amount of gross profit, bring it down and you will write here gross profit brought down. Gross profit is 16,800. Now from 16,800, if I subtract 5,000 and 2,400, I will be left up with at this particular moment 9,400. I will be left up with 9,400. This is my net profit, no doubt about it. A question has given to us very clearly that branch manager is entitled to 5% of the net profit. So I will write here manager's commission. Manager's commission. So in order to extract this figure, we have to find out in this particular case, we have to prepare branch trading and profit and loss account. So branch manager's commission will be equal to 5% of 9,400. That is equal to $470. So now you are aware of branch manager's commission also. So you can find out the net profit. The net profit is 8,930. 8,930. Correct? Second demand of the question is, we are supposed to convert the branch office trial balance. Correct? So branch office trial balance, branch office trial balance, Branch office trial balance in reporting currency and your reporting currency is rupee this time. Now you will do the what we call your conversion work. Correct? In order to convert the same, what I am supposed to do now is uh, first I will write the head office account. First I will write the head office account. Correct? And in one column, I will write dollars amount in dollars. Just wait.
So in dollars, I will multiply it with the exchange rate. Exchange rate is rupee. Then I will write the debit items, of course, in rupee terms and credit items in rupee terms. Is it clear to you or not? So your first item happens to be in this particular case, 22,100. So 22,100, you write here 22,100 with respect to head office, 22,800. Now, if you remember, in case of head office, we need not require any rate because we will convert it on actual basis. And I told you, branch is claiming that it is supposed to pay 22,800, but actually, but actually, At the end of the year, this is the amount I was talking about, correct? At the end of the year, in terms of rupee value, head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive only this much. So its corresponding value, because this item originally is appearing towards the credit side, you will have to write towards the credit side, 8,60,000. Is it clear to you, head office account? Now we have sales in this case. I will write the amount of sales. Amount of sales is $84,000 and you know we use actually average rate. In this question, average rate happens to be 47. So 84,000 into 47, if you are going to multiply, it will be equal to 39,48,000. 39,48,000. Is it clear to you or not? Then, daters. As far as daters are concerned, 4,800 is the amount. 4,800. Closing rate, we will have to apply 48. And if I am going to apply the closing rate, I will get 2,30,400. 2,30,400. Similarly, with respect to creditors. Now, I will write here creditors. Amount of creditors in the question is 3,400, so I will write here 3,400 and I will multiply it with closing rate that happens to be 48 and then towards the credit side I will write here 1,63,000, 1,63,000. Then we have got machinery and in the question it was given that when you purchase the machinery way back in 2017, at that time, the rate was 40. So, $24,000 is given to you and you will multiply it with the rate which was prevailing on the date of the transaction, that is 40. And if you multiply it with 40, you will get 9,60,000. 9,60,000. Then we have been given cash at bank. Cash at bank is 1,200. We will have to multiply it with closing rate, that is 48 to get for 57,600, 57,600, is it clear to you or not? Then we have got in the question opening stock, now opening stock will be used, will be converted by using the opening rate, as far as opening stock is concerned that is 11,200, multiply it with 46. And figure which you will get will be equal to 5,12,200. Then goods sent to branch. As far as goods sent to branch is concerned, that is 64,000. And its corresponding value, I told you at that time, is equal to 29,26,000. 29, if you will look into that branch account, you will come across here 29,26,000 because in the current year, head office sent 29,26,000 worth of goods to the branch. Is it clear to you or not? So, then we have been given expenses. So, I will write here expenses. As far as expenses are concerned, that is 5,000. Average rate, I will use 47, 2,35,000. 9,65,000. Is it clear to you or not? 
now you will tally your debit and credit items total of debit side is equal to 49 lakh 21000 and total of this side is equal to 49 lakh 71200 now you will take the exchange difference obviously your credit side is more so it, whatever exchange difference is there it will be considered as loss which will be debited to profit and loss account and it will be equal to 47,000. It will be equal to this much, correct? So, that is how you are going to prepare your, uh, convert actually your trial balance. And last thing is that we are supposed to prepare branch trading and profit and loss account also in this particular question. So, in the books of head office now, in the books of head office, books of head office we will write here branch office trading and profit and loss account branch office trading and profit and loss account so now we shall prepare again trading and profit and loss account but this time account will be prepared on the basis of rupee value reporting currency <coughs> correct so in terms of rupee so you have converted the trial balance all you have to do is prepare this account so opening stock its converted value rupee value is 5,15,200 similarly goods sent to branch its converted value is 29,26,000 29,26,000 correct then Sales, sales is equal to 39,48,000. Then we will write closing stock. Closing stock was not given. We found it out earlier by preparing branch trading and profit and loss account. And we found out it to be $8,000. Now we will find its corresponding rupee value. Your closing rate happens to be 48. So dollar 8000 into 48 will be equal to 384000. So 384000 will be what we call value of closing stock. So now you can find out your gross profit. So your gross profit will be equal to 890800. This will be your balancing figure. This will be your balancing figure. You write now gross profit over here. Gross profit is equal to 8,90,800. Correct? Then you write the expenses. In reporting currency, amount of expenses is 2,35,000. Then you write here depreciation. There are two ways to compute depreciation. Earlier value of machinery was 24,000. Depreciation in terms of dollar is 2,400. You take 2,400 and multiply it with 40 to get the rate. Or you have the converted value of the machinery that is 9,60,000. Converted value of machinery is 9,60,000. You simply take 10% of that. One and same thing. 96,000. Correct? And then we have manager's commission. You should not forget to write this. It is not written in the trial balance, but it is part of adjustment, depreciation and manager's commission. Because these are parts of adjustment, that means when we write here manager's commission, it means manager's commission due because it is not yet paid because it is given in the adjustment. And we have computed manager's commission as $470 earlier. In fact, that was another reason to prepare the what we call opening, trading and profit and loss account of the branch in terms of dollar itself because 
we were not having the closing stock figure we were not having the what we uh, figure of managers commission so 470 into rupee 48 that will give you uh, 22560 22560 now you will find out your net profit and your net profit as per your solution is 4,90,240. So that is why I told you this question happens to be pretty strong question. Correct? Machinery you have written here 9,60,000. Correct? In the trial balance you have written only machinery. That means depreciation is not adjusted in the trial balance yet. So that is why now when I will write machinery in the balance sheet, I will subtract depreciation also. <laughs> now I will prepare the balance sheet. And preparation of balance sheet should not be a cumbersome task for you now. Because you have done so many questions, correct? So as far as preparation of balance sheet is concerned, that should be very easy in fact and uh, you can easily manage it by yourself in fact i will simply explain here because we can look here uh, that is machinery account is 960 so depreciation which we have written in the profit or loss account i will subtract i will get 864000 i should not forget to write closing stock then debtors and cash at bank only these items are there as far as balance sheet is concerned and then you need to understand that outstanding manager's commission 22,560 will also appear towards the liability side. Creditors will also appear. Net profit will also appear. And in the balance sheet here, uh, in the balance sheet, this, this figure is wrong. In fact, your head office account is 8,60,000. Right here, head office account. 860 and you add net profit this is net profit 490240 to it to get what we call figure see this is your trial balance this item will appear in your balance sheet 860 sales we have already incorporated now daters and then creditors 163200 actually 163200 it is and machinery 960000 we have subtracted depreciation return 864 cash at bank 57600 then we have got in this case in this case nothing else and when we prepare profit and loss account i think i haven't written exchange difference exchange difference also you must write exchange difference Exchange difference we haven't written is still. Exchange difference is 47,000. Exchange difference is 47,000. Correct? This is how you are going to do this particular question. Now, question number. 12 again is similar to the one which we have already done correct this question is also on similar lines for example yesterday in the last session should i say we we'll learn that when items are given in let us say dollars or in a currency other than rupee in in the last session we did some question where reporting currency was not rupee correct and we were converting what we call a uh, rupee value into the what we call reporting currency which was not rupee for example we did many question where reporting currency was dollars and branch was in india so branch has prepared their accounts in terms of rupee and we were converting rupee value into dollars or pounds or whatever it is similarly even in this question correct even 8.10 was also of this category even in this question, Messrs. Hillview Limited has head office at Singapore and branch at Delhi. So head office this time is in Singapore. 
<coughs> branch is in Delhi. So branch must be preparing its account in rupee. And head office is in Singapore. So this time rupee will become the foreign currency. Foreign currency rupee will have to be converted into now the reporting currency. The reporting currency in this case is Singaporean dollar. So Delhi branch is an integral foreign operation. And Delhi branch gives you same information, almost same information should I say. For example, we have got opening stock, purchases and sales, daters, creditors, bills of exchange, bills, pay, bills receiver, bills payable, wages and salary, rent and rates. Then we have got in this case sundry charges. Now computer we have got but this item will require bit of information, a bit of caution in fact because Similar to the last question, even in this question, it is given computers were acquired from a remittance of Singapore dollar. That is 12,000. That is 12,000. Correct. And also it is given that we have to depreciate computers by 40%. And then we have been given in this question here, bank balance, New York office account. The branch is claiming that in terms of rupee, we are supposed to pay you 3040. Correct? 3040, we are supposed to pay you. It is not clearly given whether these figures are in lakhs or in rupee or whatever it is. So we are supposed to pay you 3040. Now, further in this question, it is written unsold stock at Delhi branch is rupees 15,60,000. You will convert it by dividing the closing rate. Rates which are given to you are in the beginning, the rate is 50, at the end, rate is 52. Average rate 51 is given and similar to that question here also information is that conversion when you will convert the things at least two digits must be there. Delhi branch showed a debit balance of Singaporean dollar of this much. Singaporean dollar of this much. Correct. So similar to that particular question. Our head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive 59897.43 from you. That means this value, this value has corresponding value equal to 59897.43. Actually, these figures which, which have been given to us, here it is written rupees in thousands actually. So that is almost 30 lakh 40,000. So 30 lakh 40,000 rupees is equal to this much of dollars. Correct. And uh, there is nothing else in this question. So similar to the last question, first, what you are going to do, your opening stock, whatever figure of opening stock is given in terms of rupee, you divide it by opening exchange rate. You divide it, you will get 12,000. Correct. Purchases and sales. Take the average rate. Average rate is 51. Divide the figures. You will get these figures. Sunday daters. Take the closing rate. Sunday daters in creator. Take the closing rate. Divide the respective figures of rupee value. You will get their corresponding value in Singaporean dollar. Similarly, bills of exchange divided by 52 to get these figures. Similarly, wages. Average rate you will apply. Rent and rates. Average rate. Average rate. So for these three item wages, rent rates and taxes and sundry expenses, you will have to take the average rate, divide the items by these rates and you will get these, these figures which are corresponding figures. Computer 12,000, it is clearly given in the question that Singapore, the head office sent 12,000 Singaporean dollars, correct? So 12,000 is their corresponding value. We haven't adjusted depreciation in the trial balance because question is not saying that you have to adjust it in the trial balance. If you want, you can. You still can. Instead of writing 12,000, you know computer is equal to 12,000. If you want to adjust the depreciation, you will have to write it this way. 12,000 dollars. Now you subtract 40% because rate of depreciation is 40%. So whatever net value is there, you write that and you also write depre depreciation figure. Correct? So you if you want to break it, you, want, you can. Otherwise, you can directly go straight way around. Bank balance divided by closing rate, 10,000. Singaporean office account is this much. 
even in this question both sides are telling of their own so no exchange difference is arising now with the help of these dollars we will prepare the revenue statement so sales i will write i will write the opening stock purchases and closing stock you must divide it by 52 15 lakh 60 thousand rupee value divided by 52 to get in corresponding value in singaporean dollars so your gross profit is this much once you have found out the gross profit correct write your expenses rates and taxes sundry charges wages we have already written and depreciation depreciation is us dollar 12000 i have written 0 0.40 or you can simply write into 40 percent so we will get the depreciation equal to 4800 correct because we did not adjust the depreciation in the trial so depreciation will be subtracted while preparing the balance sheet when in the balance sheet you will write computers twelve thousand dollars you will have to subtract the depreciation you will get this net figure closing stock is given sundry daters bank balance bills receivable similarly bills payable creditors and in this question there is net loss when you will write this figure 59897.43 because this is the amount due to the head office so subtract from there on the loss amount and then write the figures correct so this is your question number 8.12 8.11 i have already done at length and even we discuss this particular question 8.10 and 8.12 is absolutely same is absolutely same correct so these are vital questions and then question number 8.9 and question number 8.8 .8, i think we have already done till up to 8.7 so these two questions are remaining i will pick these two these two questions in the upcoming session to finish off this particular topic and chapter correct so till then it's time to say goodbye